Saturday night, 6 Eastern, the Garden, the Knicks, the Sixers. This series, we talked about it with Harrison Sanford an hour ago, should be fantastic. I just, I'm going to caution this. Don't get your hopes up too high for some kind of seven-game instant classic because I think the Knicks handle this with Joel Embiid playing on one leg. And this is not Knicks... This is not oh Nick's fanboy God. betting action here because I've bet on them a lot down the stretch and leaned in on them. I just okay. really think Jalen Brunson takes over at some point. I do. They've played well even without Julius Randle. Even once the Julius Randle news came down, they could have packed it in to a certain extent. They could be the team that backed into the fourth spot in the Eastern Conference. Instead, they stepped on the gas and they won the two seed, which means – They won't have to face Boston until they get to the Eastern Conference Finals. And they look with Jalen Brunson when he is on like a team that can give Boston a fight, a nasty six or seven game fight in the Eastern Conference Finals. And Aaron brought it up earlier in the week. OG Ananobi may be as much of a key to this thing as anything else. When he's on the floor, they're a completely different team, Joe. You can tell me I'm crazy. I put it (laughs) in yesterday. You can tell me I'm crazy. I put it in yesterday. Knicks on the series spread minus a game and a half. They're going to take care of the Sixers in six or less. <gasps> wow. Oh, the way you were talking, I thought you were going to say sweep. Like, you, no. you've looked past Philly. You're moving on to Boston already. Like you're not even concerned with past Philly, the task past at Milwaukee. Hand. We're in the yeah. Eastern Conference Finals, baby. Yeah, you're not even worried about the Sixers here. You're not worried about Joel and Embiid at all. What is that, Trace? They will lose a game in Philly. They will lose a game in Philly and and Fine. maybe even both in Philly. But but this doesn't go oh. more than 6. Not with Embiid looking the way he did the other night. He is he's not even he's not even 75%. Yeah, I'm looking my chops too. I cannot wait to be in the building on Saturday, man. It's Oh, as a Knicks fan, it, it hasn't been this good in a very long time. And hopefully as a Knicks better, it can even get better for us going forward. I think they're going to win this series. Now, one thing I will say, I just don't know how, because you have a very <laughs> unconventional head coach in Nick Nurse. And if I remember my time covering the, the Toronto Raptors, he has a billion, a billion different defenses that he feels comfortable throwing out there. Remember in the NBA Finals? when they were playing against Steph Curry, he threw out a box in one. Like, what NBA coach throws out a box in one? And so with how good Jalen Brunson has been, I am staying so far away from any prop that's related to him because he might throw out a trapping defense. He might throw out a, a zone defense. He might throw. He might just go man-to-man. You have no idea. So when it comes to this Philadelphia and New York Knicks series, I'm staying away from any Jalen Brunson props. I think the Knicks win. I just don't know how. And obviously with Joel Embiid, it's not a wise bet, in my opinion, to bet on him because we don't know what type of health he's going to have. And it might get worse as the series prolongs. So really got to stay away from that. For me, I do like a Dante DiVincenzo three-point prop because he's somebody who's been consistent for the Knicks. And they love, even though they're a slow-paced team, they love to run on misses. That's how they got the Sixers to lose three games. That's how they beat the Sixers three games out of four this year, running on the misses. So Dante Zivintenzos had hit at least three threes in every game. In fact, he hit four threes in three of the games. Only one game he hit three. So I look at his three-point prop. I think the Knicks are going to win this series. So there's a prop out there right now on BetMGM. Knicks to win game one and to win this series. I think that's what happens with the Garden crowd really infusing them for game one. But other than that, I'm staying away from Brunson. I'm staying away from Joel Embiid. I'm staying away from all the main guys because that's what – Tom Thibodeau, and that's what Nick Nurse are going to really center on as we go into this series from a defensive standpoint. I don't know why, but I really am pulling for the magic. I can't can't help myself but want to bet on them. I'll tell you why I'm pulling for the magic, because what the Cavaliers did in the last game of the season was disgusting. Absolutely disgraceful for them to pull out their starters that they had available for the game and pretty much concede to wanting the four seed when they had a chance at one point to be the two seed. That's nasty work, and I don't like that. That's not good integrity from a professional basketball team. With that being said, they should beat the Orlando Magic, but I can't necessarily guarantee that with how they look when it comes to the playoffs. J.B. Bickerstaff is under a lot of fire here. This team has poor spacing. 
Evan Mobley and Jared Allen, they just don't work. We saw it last year in the playoffs with the New York Knicks when the lights were too bright for Jared Allen and the Cleveland Cavaliers. I think they're going to have a real issue with this series. The Magic are a great defensive team. One prop that I really like, I really like, and it's basing it on what I saw in person last year when the Cavaliers faced the Knicks. They squeezed the floor. Donovan Mitchell's going to have no space. As long as Evan Mobley and Jared Allen are out there, he's going to have to find shooters to give himself some space. Max Strews right now, plus 500 to lead the series in three-point makes. He takes seven per game. They brought him in from Miami for this particular reason because they need floor spacing. The floor is just crunched all the time, particularly in the playoffs. And with a team like the Magic, you're going to need to give him some space. So Max Strews, plus 500 to lead the series in three-point makes, I think is a very good bet. And that's obviously great value. The more and more I look at this matchup, the more and more I like Phoenix. I'm on the side that we've had the movement. We're out to minus 130 bet MGM as a series favorite. Now, are there reasons to be concerned in addition to health? Yes, there are. Like They've been pretty bad on the road. That's That's been a problem all season. They have uh, failed to close games throughout the year. So uh, that concerns me. It was a 3-0 sweep in the regular season for whatever that's worth. But it was also Phoenix like winning by double digits. Mm -hmm. The matchup problem is real. Now, are you going to bet on the elite defense? That's it. That's like kind of your argument with Rudy Gobert leading the way. Thing is, how are the Suns going to beat you? They're going to beat you on the perimeter. It's not right. with the bigs. So matchup-wise, against certain teams, the T-Wolves would have a huge advantage. But as far as this specific matchup, that's why I think it's a good point. Like, I don't really know that this is the spot. I, I'm going to take the Suns. Look, they're minus 130 for a series price. If you want to go minus a game and a half, if you want to take Suns at five, mm. I don't hate it. I, I, I could see what, what you threw out there about this being a great series, a long series. But uh, I, I side with the Suns the more and more I look at it. I feel the same way as Joe. I mean, the offensive star power that the Suns have, the experience, you put it all together. These guys have been playing together for a while now, and I know they've been inconsistent, but the playoffs are a different animal in the NBA. And Chris Finch, you know, mentioned it at the top of the segment. Uh -huh, I mean, Chris Mack pretending to be Chris Finch, talking about <laughs> the Wolves growing up. I don't know. I just think in this situation, the pressure is on this young T-Wolves team. I think they're going to be up against it. Looking at the series spread and series prices, I kind of think I would rather just bet game to game. Like, Suns yeah. game one, be on that side, see how it goes. I think the Suns are the right side of it. But I know people who I respect who bet the T-Wolves preseason to go to the finals at like 35 to one. So I wouldn't be surprised if they do go on a deep run, but I think my strategy would just be to take this one game by game. Michael, want to make sure uh, we get your cup thoughts in there. Uh, how long is the list of teams where, where you can <laughs> see them winning the whole thing? And uh, what, what numbers uh, do you like? Yeah, I mean, I, before the season started, you know, I was making like the circuit or a lot of radio hits and such. I, I was kept saying like this was a Kentucky Derby season. It, I think you could make a, a really good case for there being ten, you know, field of ten teams. Um, of course, a couple of them were like the Devils who who didn't make it, et cetera. But uh, I, I think that's still true. I think that there's still you know ten teams at least that that will go into this thing with with Stanley Cup aspirations and legitimate ones. And of course we remember last year, nobody was, nobody thought the Knights were going to get to the Stanley cup final. Nobody thought the Panthers were going to get to the Stanley cup final. So when you add in that, you're like, Oh God, this field can have 13 teams. If you want to throw in a couple of real dark horses. So I, I, I think that you can, I'd listen to anybody making a case for, for, for any of these teams, especially at the top of the board. Um, but for me, I, I'm going to, I would predict odds aside stars versus hurricanes. And if I had to pick one bet still out there, uh, I, I guess Dallas at plus 850 is still fine. But like I said, I would wait, see if you can get a better number if they fall behind. <laughs> 